Okay, so today we're going to learn how to use the colored pencils that came with your art kit for this year. Um, you have a 24 color pack and they have their names written on them. So I'm going to refer to these different names so that you know which pencil I'm talking about. You can find those names if you look on your pencil on the side here. Um, it says it is a dark yellow. That's the one. Okay. Oops, sorry. So the other thing you might have noticed about these pencils is that they are pre-sharpened, so you're going to keep sharpening this edge. But when you sharpen them, you definitely need to use a hand sharpener, which I did give you one. Use that and not an electric sharpener because these are woodless, meaning there is no wood around the pencil core. Normally there's a colorful core and wood surrounding it. This whole thing is color, so this is going to last you a really long time. They're also a little sturdier in terms of the tip of the pencil, but be careful, they can snap in the middle if you're holding them too hard. So try not to put too much torque on the center of the barrel. Um, like I said, you have 24 colors, but the number of colors that you can make visible with this is just so, so many, because what they do is you don't put them on just one color at a time like you see here, you're going to layer them. And in order to layer them, we're gonna multitask a little bit. We're gonna practice using some color theory and learn some key art words while we practice layering them. Some of these have um, very specific meanings in terms of the color wheel. You can reference your color wheel image that I have put into Schoology that has these um, with the definitions around with them. But because not every color, like we don't have a red-orange. On the color wheel, you have a color that's called red-orange. We don't have that here. We can create red-orange by layering something like orange and light vermilion or orange and carmine. But we're going to kind of loosely interpret some of these colors as we do the mixing. And it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to look kind of like little squares like this, where you're seeing a little bit in the center that's not covered, and then um, overlapping parts that create the new color. So you can see a little bit of the true light violet there, and then the light violet with the Paris blue together creates a new color that you didn't have before. It's optically blending. So this is the cool part about colored pencils. All right, so um, I'm gonna start with the first one is gonna be probably the least dramatic change it's gonna be monochromatic. So monochromatic usually just means one color plus black or white, um, the tints, tones, and shades of one color. We're gonna loosely interpret that and just use a set of colors that are all mostly the same. So I'm gonna take all four greens. You have light green, sap green, hooker's green, and dark green. We're gonna use all four of them. and we're gonna layer them here in a little square. And then I'm gonna move down the line and you'll see as I do, after I do this first one, um, I'm not gonna introduce each color that I add because I'm gonna go speed up the process a little bit for you, but you'll see how I add the, I'll put the list of the colors I chose underneath towards the end and we'll kind of, we'll debrief after I draw them in. All right, people, you can see I have all of our 
um, color schemes done. And you can see I also redid one of them. So our analogous color scheme was really just a cool color scheme. It wasn't truly analogous. I don't know what I was doing. So I fixed it. Everyone makes mistakes. So now we have our monochromatic. Again, I said loosely interpreted and I didn't mean it. So these are four different varieties of green. This is technically more of a yellow green versus a true green. I made all the greens together just so you could see how the different colors overlap. Now, an analogous color scheme, if you look at our reference image, is really next to each other on the color wheel. I had spread it all the way out to yellow just for because I like how that looks. But to keep it closer together, I went back in and I did more of a yellow, green, green, blue, green, and blue. So really four right in a row. And that's what you can see here. Now, a triadic color scheme. These are um, very pleasing to look at to me. Those are evenly spaced around the color wheel. So they create a triangle around the wheel. So you can see my triangle would be yellow, blue, green, and red, violet. So the colors closest to yellow, blue, green, and red, violet in my pack to make a pleasing scheme was light ochre, scarlet lake, and dark green. Complementary colors are usually just a pair of two directly across from each other on the color wheel, like orange and blue, or violet and yellow, straight across. In our instance, we have two different color yellows that really um, either one could work. So I decided to do two violet bands and have the yellow, uh, the light yellow and the dark yellow next to it. Split complementary colors play off of the idea of a regular complementary color, so like yellow and violet, but instead of having yellow and violet, you could do yellow and then the color on either side of the opposite one. So red and green plus the color on either side. So I chose to use light vermilion as my red and then as my yellow green, light green, and as my blue green, I went with the hooker's green. Could also use dark green for this instance. If you look at the tetradic example, this is also called rectangular, or sometimes it's called um, a double split complementary. I pretty much stuck with this, red, orange, green, and blue. Pretty true red, orange, green, and blue with carmine orange, Paris blue, and sap green. Same thing for the square, it's very similar, just they are, um, four colors are evenly spaced. Instead of in the rectangle, you can see there's three here and then one between. These ones, there's two colors in between each. So I tried to be closer to this and I ended up with orange, light blue, light green, and light violet. Thinking they were more like yellow, green, yellow, orange, I know it's uh, regular orange rather, so yellow, green, regular orange, um, red, violet, and true blue. Now for the warm and the cool, those ones you just get to split your color wheel kind of in half. Your reds, oranges, and yellows, your fire and sun colors are warm, your greens, blues, and violets, oceany colors, um, those are cool. So have fun picking those. I actually used burnt sienna and pink in with my warms, even though they wouldn't be named on my color wheel necessarily. They definitely fit within the warm family. You can see how it's very harmonious because again, they're, they're related versus when you look at something like this where you're getting some higher contrast because they're farther apart on the color wheel. All right, so now it is your turn. Have fun, happy coloring.